Here we go. And here we go for another audio book on Watership Down. This is episode 21. For El El Halara to cry. Now, this is Holly speaking. The night that you left the Warren, the Ausla were turned out to look for you. How long it seems now. We followed your scent down to the brook, but when we told the Thierra that you have appeared to have set off downstream, he said there was no point in risking lives following you. If you were gone, you were gone. But everyone who came back was to be arrested. So then I called off the search. Nothing unusual happened the next day. There was a certain amount of talk about Fiber and the rabbits who'd gone with them. Everyone knew that Fiber had said that something bad was going to happen and all sorts of rumors started. A lot of rabbits said there was nothing in it, but some thought Fiber might have foreseen men with guns and ferrets. That was the worst thing anyone could think of, that or the white blindness. Willow and I talked things over with the Thierra. These rabbits, he said, who have claimed to have the second sight, I've known one or two in my time, but it's not usually advisable to take much notice of them. For one thing, many are just plain mischievous. A weak rabbit who can't hope to get far by fighting sometimes tries to make himself important by other means and prophecy is a favorite. The courteous thing is, the curious thing is that when he turns out to be wrong, his friends seldom to notice. As long as he puts on a good act and keeps talking. But then again, you might get a rabbit who really has this odd power, for it does exist. He foretells a flood, perhaps, or ferrets or guns. All right. So a certain number of rabbits will stop running. What's the alternative? To evacuate a warren is some tremendous business. Some refuse to go. The cheap rabbit leaves with as many as will come. His authority is likely to be put to the most severe test, and if he loses it, he won't get it back in a hurry. At the best, you're gonna a big bunch of Hollesial trailing around in the open, perhaps with those and kittens tacked on. The eel, beer and hordes. The remedy's worse than the disease. As always, it's better for the worn as a whole if rabbits sit tight and do their best to dodge their dangers underground. That was the Thierra, the old rabbit. Of course, I never sat down and thought, said Fiber. It would have taken the Tierra to think all that out. I simply had the screaming horrors. Great Golden Frith, 
I hope I never have them like that again. I shall never forget it. That and the night I spent under the yew tree. There's terrible evil in the world. It comes from men, said Holly. All other Elo do what they have to do, and Frith moves them as he moves us. They live on the earth, and they need food. Men will never rest till they spoil the earth and destroy the animals. But I better go on with this tale of mine. The next day in the afternoon, it began to rain. Those scrapes we dug in the bank, whispered Buckthorn the dandelion. Everyone was underground, just chewing pellets or sleeping. I have gone up for a few minutes to pass a rocka. <laughs> I was on the edge of the wood, quite near the ditch, when I saw some men come through the gate at the top of the opposite slope. Up by the board thing. I don't know how many there were. Three or four, I suppose. They had long black legs and they were burning white sticks in their mouths. That means cigarettes or fags, they call it in England, which is an English book. They didn't seem to be going anywhere, and they began to walk slowly around in the rain, looking at the hedges and at the brook. After a time, they crossed the brook and came clumping up towards the warren. Whenever they came a rab to a rabbit hole, one of them would prod at it, and they kept talking all the time. I remember the smell of the elder bloom in the rain and the smell of the white sticks. Later, when they came closer, I slipped underground again, and I can hear them for some time thumping about and talking. I kept thinking, well, they got no guns and no ferrets, but somehow I didn't like it. What did the Tierra say? Asked Silver. I have no idea. I didn't ask him and neither did anyone else as far as I know. I went to sleep and when I woke up there was no sound above and it was evening. So I decided to souffle. Souffle means eat, chow down, pig out. The rain had settled in but it pottered the field and fed for a little while all the slain. I could see anything was altered except for here and there the mouth of a hole they'd been poking in. The next morning was clear and fine. Everyone was out to souffle as usual. I remember Nightshade told the Thiera that he ought to be careful and not to tire himself now that he's getting in the ears. And the Thiera said he'd show him who's getting on the ears and cuffed him and pushed him down the bank. It was all quite good natured, you know. But he did it to show Nightshade that the cheap rabbit was still a match for him. I was going out for lettuces that morning, and some reason or another I decided to go alone. Three is usual for a number of lettuce party, said Bigwig. Yes, I know three is the usual number, but there was some special reason why I wanted to do it alone that day. Oh, yes, I remember. I wanted to see if there's any early carrots. I thought they might be just ready, and I reckoned that I was going to go hunting about in a strange part of the garden. I knew better off myself. I was out most of the morning, but and it cannot been long before night frith, and I came back through the wood. I was coming down the silent bank. I know most rabbits prefer the golden loose, but I always went by the silent bank. I got into the part open of the wood where it comes down towards the old fence, and I noticed a rudoodoo 
in the lane on the top of the opposite slope. Hrududil. Remember a few uh, episodes ago? It means car, truck, tractor. That's what a hrududil is. And they must have been heavy because it, it took two men and carried one of them. The men carried around these things into the field. And a few rabbits who were above ground went down. I didn't. I seen the gun and I thought it was probably going to use ferrets and perhaps nets. So I stayed where I was and watched. And I thought, as soon as I'm sure what they're up to, I'll go warn the Thiera. There were more talking and more white sticks. The men never hurried, did they? One of them got a spade and began filling in the mouths of all the holes he could find. Every hole he came to, he would cut out a turp of bub and pushed it into the hole. That puzzled me. Because with ferrets, they want to drive the rabbits out. But I was expecting that they'd leave a few holes open and net them. Although, it would have been a foolish way to ferret. Because a rabbit that went up a block run would be killed underground and when the man could not get his ferret back very easily, you know. You know. Don't make it too grim, Holly, said Hazel, for Pipkin was shuddering under the thought of a block run and the pursuing ferret. Too grim? Replied Holly bitterly. I've hardly started yet. Would anyone like to go away? No. No one moved, and after a few moments, he continued. Ha! <laughs> then the other, another of the men fetched a long, thick, bending thing. I haven't got the words for these man things, but it's something like a length of a very thick bramble. Each of the men took one and put one on one of the heavy things, and there was kind of a hissing sound. And, well, I know you must find this difficult to understand, but the air turns real bad. For some reason, I got a strong sense of the stuff that came out of the bramble things. Even though I was some way off, I couldn't see or think. It seemed to be falling. I tried to jump up and run, but I didn't know where I was, and I found I'd run down the edge of the wood toward the men. I stopped just in time, and I was bewildered, and I lost the idea of warning the Thierra. After that, I just sat where I was. Ew. Damn. The men put the bramble into each hole and they left open and after nothing happened for a little while and then I saw Scabius. You remember Scabius? He came out of the hole along the hedge. One they didn't notice and I could see at once that he'd smell the stuff. He didn't know what he was doing, and the men didn't see him for a few moments. And then one of them struck out his arm to show where he was, and the boy shot him. He didn't kill him. Scabius began to scream, and one of the men went over, picked him up, and hit him. I really believe he may have not suffered very much because the bad air turned him silly. But I wish I haven't seen it. After that, the man stopped by the hole where Scabius came out of. By this time, the poison air must have been spreading throughout the runs and the burrows underground. I can imagine what that had been like. You can't! said Bluebell. Holly stopped and after a pause, Bluebell went on. I heard the commotion in the beginning 
before I smelled the stuff myself. The does seems to get it first and some of them begin to try to get out. But the ones who had litters wouldn't leave the kittens and they began attacking any rabbit that came near them. They wanted to fight to protect the kittens, you know. As soon as the runs were cramped with rabbits clawing and clambering over one another, they went up to the runs that they were accustomed to use and found them blocked. Some managed to turn around and they couldn't get back because of the rabbits coming up. Then the runs began to be blocked lower down with dead rabbits and the live rabbits tore them to pieces. I shall never know how I got away with what I did. It was a chance uh, in a thousand. I was in the burrow near one of the holes where the men was using and they made a lot of noise putting the bramble thing in. I got an idea it wasn't working properly. As soon as I picked up the smell of the stuff, I jumped out of the burrow, but I was still fairly clear-headed. I came up the run just as the men were talking or taking the bramble out again. Then they were looking at it, talking, and they didn't see me. I turned around, actually at the mouth of the hole, and went down again. Do you remember the slack run? I suppose hardly a rabbit went down there in our lifetime. It was not very deep and it didn't lead anywhere in particular. No one knows who even made it. But Prit must have guided me. For I went straight down the slack run and began to creep along it. I was actually digging at times. It was all loose earth and fallen stones. There's some sort of uh, forgotten shafts and drops that led from above and down. Coming the terrible sounds, cries of help. Kittens squealing for their mothers. Alzla trying to give orders. Rabbits cursing and fighting each other. Once a rabbit came tumbling down the shafts and his claws just scratched me. Like a horse chestnut blur falling in autumn. It was Clansendine and he was dead. I had to tear at him for I can get over him. The place was so low and narrow, and then I came on. I would smell the bad air, and it was so deep down, I must have been beyond the worst of it. Suddenly I found another rabbit with me, and he was one that I met in the whole length of slack runs. It was Perpinel, and I, could tell at once he was in a very bad way. He was sputtering and gasping, but he was able to keep going. He asked if I was all right, and all I could say I was, and where do we get out? I can show you that, he said. But you can help me along. And I followed him for some time, and he stopped. He kept forgetting where he was, and I shoved him hard. I even bit him once. I was terrified he was going to die and block the run. At last we began to come up and I could smell fresh air. We found we got into one of those runs that would lead us into the woods. The men done their work badly, resumed Holly. Either they didn't know about the wood holes or they just couldn't be bothered to come and block them. Almost every rabbit that came up the field was shot. But I saw two get away. One was nose in the air. But I don't know who the other one was. The noise was very frightening. And I would have run myself, but I kept waiting to see either the Thierro would come. After a while, I began to realize there was other, a few other rabbits in the woods. Pine needles was there, I remember. Butter bar and ash. I got a hold of all I could and told him to sit tight under cover. After a long time, the men finished. And they put the bramble things, they take the bramble things out of the holes and the boy, the boy put the bodies in a bag. Holly stopped and pressed his nose under Bigwig's ear, uh, flank. Well, never mind 
about that bit, said Hazel in a steady voice. Tell us how you came away. Before that happened, said Holly, a great hoo-doo-doo came into the field in the lane, and it wasn't one of the men came in. It was very noisy, and it was yellow, as yellow as charlock. And then the front was this great silver shiny thing that held its great front paws. I, didn't, I don't know how to describe it to you. It looked like inlay, but it was broad and not so bright. And this thing, how can I tell you? It tore the field to bits. It destroyed the field. And he stopped again. Captain, said Silver, we all know you see things bad beyond telling, but surely that's not quite what you mean. Upon my life, as said Holly trembling, it buried itself in the ground and pushed great masses of earth in front of it until the field was destroyed. The whole place became a cattle weight in winter. You could no longer tell where the part of the field had been. Between the wood and the brook, earth, roots, grass, and bushes, it pushed before it, and others, things as well, from underground. After a long time, I went back into the wood, and I've forgotten the idea of collecting the other rabbits. But there were three who joined me all the same. Bluebell here, Pumpernail, and the young Toadflax. Toadflax is the only member of the Ausla I have seen, and I asked him about the Thierra. But he couldn't talk any kind of sense. I never found out what happened to the Thierra. I hope he died quickly. Pumpernel was lightheaded and chattering nonsense, said Bluebell. And, uh, and Bluebell enough was not much better. For some reason, I can only think of Bigwig. I remember how I was going to arrest him, to kill him, really. And I felt I had to find him to tell him I was wrong. And this idea was all the sense I had left. The four of us went wandering away, and we must have gone almost half circle, because after a while we came to a brook blow what had been our field. We followed it down into the big wood, and that night, while we were still in the wood, Toadflex died. He was clear-headed, for a short time before, and I remember saying something he said. Bluebell had been saying he knew that man hated us for raiding crops and gardens. And Toadflick answered, That is not why they destroyed the Warren. It was because we were in their way. They kill us to suit themselves. Soon after we went to sleep, and a little while later, we were alarmed by a noise or other. We tried to wake him and realized he was dead. We left him lying there where he was and went on, went on until we reached the river. We couldn't describe, I could not describe it because I know you were all there. And by morning this time, we thought you might have been somewhere near and we began to go across, uh, go along the, the bank, upstream, looking for you. Ooh. It wasn't long before you found the place where you must have crossed. There was tracks, a great many, in the sand of the steep bank and Haraka, about three days old. They found three-year-old shit, uh, three-day-year-old shit. Dude. Yeah, dude. The tracks didn't go upstream or downstream, so I knew you must have gone over. I swam across and found more tracks on the other side. So then the others came over too, and the river was high. I suppose you must have 
had it easier before the rain. I didn't like the fields on the other side of the river. There was a man with a gun who kept walking everywhere, and I took the other two on across the road, and soon we came up to a bad place, all heather and soft black dirt. We had a hard time there, but again I came upon Haraka, about three days old, three day year old shit, and no sign of any holes or rabbits. So I thought there might have been a chance they were yours. So your pile of shit you left, bro, I'm hoping that was yours. Yep. So I'm going to keep following your shit. Wow. That's a lot of haraka. That's a lot of rabbit shit. Okay. I thought there was a chance to be yours. Bluebell was right. But Pimpernel was feverish. And I was afraid he was going to die too. Then we had a bit of luck, or we thought at the time. That night we fell in with a halissal on the edge of the heather, an old tough rabbit with his nose all scratched and scarred. He told us it was a warren not far off and showed us which way to go. We came to the woods and the field again but we were too much exhausted that we couldn't start looking for the warren. We crept into the ditch and haven't had the heart to tell anyone of the others to keep awake. I tried to keep awake myself, but I couldn't. When was this? asked Hazel. Uh, the day before yesterday, said Holly. Early in the morning, when I awoke, it was sometime before nine fret. Everything was quiet, and all I could smell was rabbit. But I felt there was something wrong. I woke Bluebell, and I was just going to wake Pimpernel when I realized there was a big bunch of rabbits around us. These, they were great. Big fellows. They had a very odd smell. It was like, well, like. We know what it was like, said Piper. I thought you probably did. When one of them said, my name is Cowslip. Who are you and what are you doing here? I didn't like the way he spoke, but I couldn't see there was any reason to wish to harm us. So I told him we were at a bad time and we came a long way and we were looking for some rabbits from our warren. Hazel, Fiber, and Bigwig. As soon as I said those names, this rabbit turned to the others and cried. I knew it. I knew it. Tear them to pieces. And they all set upon us. One of them got me by the ear and ripped it before Bluebell could pull him off. We were fighting a lot of them. I was so much taken by surprise, I knew I couldn't do a great deal at first. But the funny thing is, although they were big and yelling for our blood, they couldn't fight at all. <laughs> they were obviously don't know the first thing about fighting. Bluebell knocked down a couple twice his size. Although my ear was pouring blood, I was never in really any danger. All the same, there were too many for us, and we had to run. Bluebell and I just got clear of the ditch when, they re when we realized Pumpernickel was still there. And he was ill. And as I told you, he didn't wake in time. So after all we've been porn, uh, been through, Par Purpanel was killed by the rabbit. What do you think of that? I think it's a damn shame, said Strawberry, before anybody else can speak. We were running down the fields besides the little stream, Holly went on. 
And some of these rabbits were still chasing us, and suddenly I thought, well, if I have one of them anyway, I don't care for the idea of doing nothing more than just running away to save our skins. Not after Pumpernel. I saw this cowslip was ahead of the others and out on his own. So I let him catch up to me and then suddenly I turned and went for him. I had him down and I was about ready to rip him up when he squealed out. I can tell you where your friends are. <laughs> uh, hurry up then, I said with my back legs braced against his stomach. Uh, they, they have gone to the hills, he panted. The, the high hills you can see over there. They went uh, yesterday morning. I pretend I did not believe in and acted as though I was going to kill him. But he didn't alter his story, so I scratched him and let him go. Anyway, the way he came, it was clear weather. We could see the hills plainly enough. After that, we all had worst times of all. If we hadn't been for Bluebell's jokes and chatter, we would have stopped running for certain. Haraka, one in, jokes on the other, says Bluebell. I used to roll a joke along the ground and we both follow it. That's how we kept going. I can't tell you how much about the rest of it, said Holly. My ear is terribly painful, and all the time I kept thinking of poor Pimpernel's death was my fault. If I hadn't gone to sleep, we wouldn't have died. Once we tried to sleep again, my dreams were more than I could bear. I was out of my mind, really. I only had this one idea is to find Bigwig and tell him he's been right to leave the Warren. At last we reached the hills and just nightfall of the next day we were past caring. We came over the flat open land at owl time and I didn't know I had been expecting. You know how you let yourself think that everything's going to be all right if you can only get to a certain place or do a certain thing. But when you get there, you'll find it's not that simple. I suppose it was some sort of foolish notion that Bigwig would be waiting to meet us. We found the hills were enormous, bigger than anything we've ever seen. No woods, no cover, no rabbits, and night was setting in. And then everything seemed to go to pieces. I saw scabious as plain as grass. I heard him crying too. And I saw the Thiera and Toadflex and Perpinico and tried to talk to them. I was calling Bigwig, but I didn't really expect him to hear because I was sure he wasn't there. I can remember coming out of the hedge into the open and I know that I was really hoping the eel would come and make an end of me. But when I came to my senses there was Bigwig. My first thought was I must be dead. But then I began to wonder whether Bigwig was real or not. Well, you know the rest. It's a pity I frightened you so much. But if I wasn't there, the black rabbit, there's hardly a living creature that could ever been closer to him than we have. After a silence, he added, you can imagine what it means to Bluebell and me and find ourselves underground with Monk's friends. It wasn't I who tried to arrest you, Bigwig. That was another rabbit long, long ago. And that is the end of episode 21. Any flack, feedback up yours, grumble, rumble, 
or blah or eh eh. Strawberry's still cover, trying to cover his ass. Well, Strawberry wasn't one that killed Pompanel. No, but he's from that war, and so, uh. Yeah, and it, it's an indictment on the big softies who can't fucking fight. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, I mean, look at some of the big, heavy people we know. We know they can't fight very well, right? Yeah. So. Much. We're getting there ourselves, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to be 59 here in a few months, so. My fighting days are over. Anyway, that was Watership Down. And uh, we got Holly together with Blue Bell, so now the rabbits are multiplying without female does. You got a bunch of dudes. It's a wiener fest in that big, big new war in their building. So that is me, and this is the, well, till the next episode, right? Yeah. Going in at 36 minutes. <laughs>